Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. First of all, we thank you for ministry and the fact that you allow us to, to come together to worship you and to read your word, to pray, and to be involved in the lives of individuals, Lord, who are searching for a way to have a change of life, a change of attitude, a change of behavior, and a change of conduct. Lord, the way we used to act and the way we conducted business are not pleasing to you. And so we ask that you help us to look into our steps and to realize that it's very important that we become more like you in word and in action. That we embrace the fact, Lord, that it's, this is love, not that we loved you, but that you loved us and gave your son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And it's all about love. It's all about understanding love. And Lord, until we've really learned to love you, until we've really learned to be obedient, we can't love anyone else. We've been caught up in self. The whole addictive process was because we were trying to please self. And because the world gave us so many opportunities to test and to try and to see what was out there, we went that way. And it isn't until we came into the knowledge that you are Lord, you are life, you are Lord of everything, that you were the one who gave us the guidance and the direction and the purpose that we need. So today we pray that you would speak to us and then speak through us. Help the people that see us not see you, but you working in us. Help our mouths and our hearts and our actions be according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And behind that, we'll follow up with the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. Just for the day. Okay, uh, what I'd like to do is, is well, we're going to start in on step number seven, having uh, reviewed and studied and examined and shared on the principles and concepts associated with the previous six steps. As we know, step number one, we admitted that we were powerless over the effects, and we've examined to some great extent that those effects, what they were, the effects of our what? Separation from God. And that as a result, our lives have become unmanageable, being step number one. And we went from step number one, we went to step number two, which was, uh, we admitted to God to ourselves. No, we didn't. And step number two came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to what? Because having examined and worked step number one in terms of examining our separation from God and the unmanageability that our lives was left in, that there was a degree of insanity or, or lack of sanity, sanity lack of uh, uh, acceptable behavior in our lives. So we ask that he, uh, in terms of step number two, uh, restore us to some semblance of sanity. And we've examined that aspect as well. And then we move to step number three, where we make a decision based on having uh, worked steps number one and two, we make a decision which is one of the biggest decisions we, we probably will ever make, but the best decision. We make a decision to turn what? Our will and our lives over to the care. Now we're in, they say we're in good hands with all state, and, 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 and we're on solid ground with the rock, but God is our good hands, and he is our rock, as we, as we learn in terms of First Peter. So we make that decision having examined step one and two. And step four, we begin to delve a little bit deeper into our lives and where we came from and what, what the process of life that we've embraced that has led us up to this point in terms of step number four, where we make an all-inclusive searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. And we move from there, learning a little bit more about ourselves in relationship to now having agreed to turn everything over to God, we're in step number, step number five. Where at that point is we admitted to God, to ourselves, and another human being. We're getting a little bit more better understanding. We're fine-tuning. We're, we're like, we're, we see more channels, if I, if I may. I can compare it to the cable television. We have more channels, a better view of every aspect of our life, the very facets of our lives. And we begin to be able to, 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 to release or, or to get a better understanding and, and, and to take a little bit more responsibility. So in terms of step number five, we said we admit, yes, that was us that we've examined one through four. 
We admit it to God because he's a friend of ours now. He's our Lord and our Savior. He's our deliverer. He's our way maker. We admit it to God as well as we've taken responsibility to ourselves. And thirdly, our world has begotten, begun to get bigger than just ourselves. We admit it to another person, another human being. Because now we're in a family of human beings. We're no longer uh, in terms of uh, step number two. Uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, un unmanageability in step number three, uh, uh, we're engaging in patterns of insane activity. We admit it to not only to God, to ourselves, but to another human being as we enter the family of, of, of human beings. And then finally, in, step, in terms of step number six, what we've done uh, uh, what we, and what we studied is, is that we're entirely ready. We've given up all hope of being able to be in control anymore. That God is the rudder, he, he's the, he, he's, he's the uh, guide in terms of the ship, uh, us sailing in the right direction, which we learn if we, if we study first, first uh, 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 if we study James, as we say, something so small as a bit that can be put in a horse's mouth can lead something so huge and so powerful, we learn that we, we do have power as we embrace God, that he can, he can lead us uh, 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 with the power that he's put in us into a way of living uh, uh, an, an acceptable and humane and, uh, and uh, uh, a life free of drugs and substance abuse and substance abuse behavior and we, as we enter into the family of, of, of human, of, 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 of society. We're an asset to society and we're no longer a liability to society. So as we said, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of characters. And we're going to go a little bit deeper as we go into step number, not step number seven. But right now we says we're entirely ready. We've thrown everything at the feet of God, at the foot of Christ, and we're trusting Christ to be our Lord and our Savior in everything that we've dealt with and everything that we've examined. In that, we don't want to forget that we want to give him honor, praise, and worship for doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. So as we do in, in terms of step number six, we admitted that we, we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of characters. Now, as I told the first group this morning, here's, here's where we're at in terms of step number seven. And we'll get to that. We'll, we'll say that step. I like to liken it to, I compare it to this. If, how many people have heard this? If you take care of the dollars, the pennies will take care of themselves. Have anybody ever heard that before? So what we're saying is if we're, if we're good stewards over the big stuff, the small stuff, the small things, did you get that bill? The small things God can take care of. As hard as we try to, and it's usually the small things that trip us up, not the big stuff. The small things cause us to relapse. The small things cause us to, to backslide. Oh, I'm only going to be in this environment for a little while. I'm not going to let it affect me, the small things. So here it is. Here's the comparison. Whether you're able to make it or not, let's look at step number seven. And I, I, I'm, I'll be a little bit more, I think I can uh, explain a little bit better once we look at this step itself. It's on page 115. 115. Here's the step itself. Here's the principal aspect of the step in its entirety. Humbly ask God to remove our what? Shortcomings. Which means that the big things that we did in terms of step number six, we're entirely ready to have God remove, uh, we're entirely ready to have God remove our defects of characters. Those were the big things that we've examined. Are you following what I'm saying? Everything from step number one through six or through five. We, we throw our hands up and we realize that God has control. We've given him control over everything. Are you following what I'm saying? And the comparison I made in terms of the book of James, he talks about something so small as a rudder on a ship can move a huge ship with a small piece. Are you following what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, I, I could go into 1 Corinthians and maybe 2 Corinthians, and I think God says that he gives more grace and more mercy to, to the... To the uh, to, to the less calmlier things or, or the other things in life that you that you don't uh, the, the parts of our body that we don't give much credit to, he gives more glory to those parts of the life. Are you following what I'm saying, Major? I can't think of which 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 brother Bill, can you help me out with that aspect? He gives more grace or more beauty to the to the smaller things or the less le, the the less identified care. Uh, parts of our body. But here's the point what I want to say. Small things do count. And so in terms of uh, step number seven where it says 
uh, we, in, we, we humbly ask him to remove our shortcomings. When I say that we take care of the big stuff or we take care of the dollars, uh, the pennies will take care of themselves. If we take care, of, if we do the work that God has assigned for us to do in terms of developing a relationship with him, what he'll do is he'll take care of the small things. Paul says it best. Paul says this. There was a thorn that was put in my side that I wanted to get out. And God said, I'm going to leave that thorn in your side so you can remember that you need me. Are you following what I'm saying to that, to that, somewhere in that, in, in, in that uh, manner of speaking? So there's a thorn in, it, in every last one of our sides or there's something that's nagging us that we want to get it out. But we can't get that last little thing out. Also, in terms, if you want to look at that like that, we can remember men. We can turn to uh, Romans. I think it's chapter 7. And chapter 7 says, when I want to do right, I can't do it. I want to do it. I have it in my desire to do that. Bill, if you will, let's look at that in terms. I want you to give me some clarification on that, if you would, Bill, in, in terms of uh, the shortcoming aspect. So if you would, let's open up our Bibles to Romans chapter 7. Bill, I'd like for you to give me some clarification when we read that. In respect to the shortcomings that we all have, Major, I think you were looking at that, that thorn in our side, and I think we may examine that. No, I was looking at, at Romans 3.23. 3.23? The one that reminds us. For all have sinned. Sure. Amen. Fallen short. Short coming. Come on, Major. That's, fallen short. We might as well take a look that's at that. Of God. That's Romans Amen. 3. For all of us are sinned. Mm -hmm. All of us have sinned. Romans 3 and, and 23. 23. Come up short. Come up short, Major. The first chapter, the 23rd verse. We've all fallen short. All of us, Major. Amen. All of us fall short. And we're falling short of God's glory. That's what we're Amen. supposed to be like. But that's what I was saying. When that, you talk about shortcomings, I think of that as our shortcoming. That is so, so true, Major. And it's right on time. So, someone tell us what page is on. I, I have my own Bible. 1102. 1102, Brother Jerry? The red book. We got the red book. Excuse me. The, the, the marine and the time was the same. So we're, we're going to start at, I, what I like to do is, uh, I like to start at verse 21, and we'll, we'll cover that in, 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 uh, in view of the shortcomings, how many ask him to remove our shortcomings, the small areas in our lives, the imperfections. Let's look at verse 21 on ch uh, uh, Romans chapter 3, and we'll conclude with verse 25. Are we there, man? Okay, here we are. But now the righteousness of God without the what? Without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. And we go to verse 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by what? By faith of Jesus Christ. Unto all and upon all them that what? Believe. For there is no difference in terms of this saving faith, this justification by faith. There is no difference. We go to verse 23. Why? And he tells us why there is no difference in this justification by faith, this saving faith in terms of allowing us to, to, to have a recovery program of the highest degree in terms of being really beneficiaries of the, of the recovery program. He says, why? Because all have sinned, as Major said, and come short of the glory of God. And here's the good news. What it says is, irregardless of your heritage, irregardless of your race, uh, ir irregardless of, of your sin, of the nature or the extent of your sin, God says there's justification available through Jesus Christ, a uh, 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 saving grace through Jesus Christ by faith. Now, if you didn't get that, I'd like to add this to it. And Bill, would you give us some clarification on this? He says we're saved by grace through faith. Now, here's what I want to say. All of our lives are, are, have been tattered or torn or, 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 or our lives have been wrecked. Now, if you can look at that as a cloth, anybody, can, can you picture a needle and, and, a, and some cloth? Are you following what I'm saying? You're trying to mend your life back together or are you trying to rip, mend a rip piece of cloth together? Get this vision. It's impossible to mend that cloth together if you don't put the thread through the needle. Are you following what I'm saying? And so we're saved by grace through faith. 
Are you following what I'm saying? So as you put that thread through that needle, you can begin to mend, are you following what I'm saying? That torn piece of cloth. Grace allows us through faith, just as you can pitch that needle through that thread, to begin to God to mend our lives back together into some semblance of a hold. Are you following what I'm saying, folks? Mm -hmm. The only way that you're going to be able to mend your life back together, justify it through faith, are you following what I'm saying? Saved by grace. The only way that you're going to be able to do that with this saving grace is that you go to take that needle through faith. Through that needle. Are you following? Picture that. And there's nothing that you can't mend back together in terms of you being justified through that saving grace. But you're not going to be able to do it unless you do it through faith. By grace. Bill, give us some clarification on that if you would. Well, what they're, what the, the faith they're talking about is the faith in the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, <clears throat> believing in who he is and what he did for us. That he is God, that he physically rose again, that he ascended into heaven. Uh, and, the, and we receive the grace by believing in him. <clears throat> and the grace is a free gift. Actually, faith is a free gift. And... Uh, I think that's what it's all talking about. Jesus did it all. Uh, like on the cross when he was hanging there before he died, he said it is finished. He did all the work, whole and complete. Uh, we have nothing to do with earning salvation. Anybody that claims they can earn salvation, it's a false religion. It, he did it all. So it's faith in Jesus Christ and who he did, who he is and what he did for us. He's God in the flesh. He died on the cross. He physically rose again. He's God the Son, the Son of God, the Son of Man, and that's the faith, the focus of faith that they're talking about. Well, let's move a little bit further in terms of right and right on what you're saying, Bill, in agreement with what you're saying. Let's look at verse 24. Being justified, how did you say that, Bill? Freely, freely by His grace. Amen. And that's grace. Let's look at that for a minute. That's undeserved, unearned, uh, unmerited favor. Nothing that we did. He's given it to us. Are you following what I'm saying? Let's go a little bit further. And he says, by his grace, through the redemption. In other words, we're given value in terms of where we were at enmity with God, where we were separated from God, where we were enemies with God. Now we have value. We're in right relationship with God again. So what he says is, through redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Going to verse 25. Uh, and that speaks to salvation. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation uh, through faith. There's that needle going through that thread again. Through mending our lives. Through faith uh, in his blood. Mending process. Salvation. Again. Redemption. Through his blood we have that. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins, in terms of what Major said, we've all that sin and fall short of the glory. Through uh, declared his righteousness for the remission of our sins that are past through the forbearance of God or the divine forbearance. Or the now, here's what I want to say. Let's bring this all. What does all this mean in terms of step number seven? And so what we're saying is, in terms of that, uh, he is provided for the shortcomings. Are you following what I'm saying? As Major said in terms of verse number 23. There are certain things that we can't, uh, uh, we have no control over, that we can't overcome. But he's provided in terms of the blood, in terms of uh, 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 the salvation that he's provided for us. He's, he's made uh, uh, allowances uh, to forgive us even for those short things. Are you following what I'm saying? Uh, 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 yes, what do you want to say? Um... Uh -huh. For those of you who don't know me, I've been coming back around we thank for the you. last few weeks. My we name thank is you for Greg, coming. And I'm a saint seeking restoration. Um, the reason I put it like that because recently I, I learned that, uh, you know, this is part of this. It fits in with this asking God, humbly asking him to remove our shortcomings. Because uh, since I started coming back around and, uh, right now, I've, I've been sober for about three weeks or so, a little more than three weeks. Amen. And I'm looking for God to restore me to where I was. I'm a saint because I trusted Christ, my Savior, years ago. 
And um, I just want to get back to the walk, walking in step with God the way that I should. Amen. There is some shortcomings. So I'm, I'm seeking restoration. Now when I get to that point, I can say that I am a restored, restored sinner. Um, and by that I mean that, you know, even though a person, well, most of us probably know this, but I'll just, uh, you know, do the whole nine yards to make it very clear. Um, well, we, we're going to take what but, you're but, saying. But and, and we're gonna... Even though a person might be saved, we're all sinners. We'll always be sinners. <laughs> so, you know, but then, like I said, with those shortcomings, when God removes those shortcomings, I'll be totally useful to his service. Now, right now, there's things, there's shortcomings that hold me back from that. Well, let me let me let, let, let me let me work with what you just said. Okay. Things that are, that are holding us back. Yeah. Let's look at the power passage right beneath the step itself, and this this is going to uh, parallel or go right in alignment with what you were saying. And some things that are holding us back. And God, He's so good, and He's so uh, 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 he, He's He's so perfect and holy that He provides a way, as my brother Bill said, a way of escape, even for. Those things that hold us back. And what does the power passage tell us? Let's look at that. If we confess our sins. Now there it is. The things that hold us back. He is faithful. And just. And will. And will forgive us. Our sins. And purify us. Remember those little things you said that's holding us back. Right. They will purify us. And I say that purifying also goes along with that shortcomings. Mm -hmm. Purify us from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. Which I think is which which is pretty good. Let's look at First Peter chapter three. I want to say I believe it's First Peter chapter three. Let's take a look at that in terms of purifying. Let, let's let's see what we can gather in our recovery program in terms of the power passage, uh, purifying us. I want to say First Peter. Chapter 3, or is it First Peter 1, 3 through 9? Uh, purified us. Is that? Okay. I want to say First Peter. Lord, I got it. First Peter. Chapter 3, verse 3 to 9. Okay. Uh, 3 to 9. I'm going to read that. Here we go. Verse Peter, chapter 3. Uh, and I'll read it. Uh, verse 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrecting of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse 4, to an inheritance uncorruptible and undefiled, and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith and salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Verse 6, when ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season indeed uh, be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith be a much more precious than the gold, gold that perishes, though it be tried through tried with with fire, might be found to the praise and honor and glory of appearing of, of Jesus Christ, whom not having seen, loved in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, rejoice and unspeakable uh, and full of glory. Joy unspeakable, full of and here it is, verse 9, receiving in the end of your faith the salvation of of your souls. Now, in, in times of verse, and we'll go from there to verse 22 through 25. And I believe this is where it is. <laughs> Let's read it. It says 22. And see it. Here it is right here. What I've just read is the believer's hope in terms of the trials and, uh, and, and the joy in the midst of those trials. And so what we learn in terms of having done steps one through 
six is that uh, we're going to go through some things, and we learned that we're going through some things. But now we're now we're identifying in terms of uh, uh, entirely humbly ask Him to remove our shortcomings. What? How do we deal with those shortcomings? Uh, having understood that we were redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, and we have gone through some things. Here it is in verse 22. The power and the permanence of God's word. Verse 22. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the what? Truth. Through the spirit unto unfraid love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with what? A pure heart fervently. So now we get into heartfelt issues in terms of how do we, how do we uh, deal with those issues, those shortcomings? And we deal with them through love. We deal through them through the new heart that God gives us, having been purified from that old life and that old behavior. Uh, uh, in terms of those sins that we've dealt with, we've been cleansed by, by in terms of we, we talked about justification. And we, we talked about uh, uh, God cleansing us from unrighteousness earlier in terms of uh, uh, Romans chapter 3. Let's go to verse uh, 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. Amen. We're into a new life. By what the word, which is what we're studying now, which liveth and abideth forever. So no matter what it is in terms of our shortcoming, that word lives and abides and works in us forever. Let's, let's move a little bit further in terms of verse 24. For all flesh, if we try and do it on our own, this is why it's by grace and not by works and by faith. For all flesh is as grass, and all grass are all glory of man as the flower of grass. And grass withereth, and the flower thereof fadeth away. Our works are, 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 are just won't get it. Here it is in verse 25. But the word of the Lord endured again for how long? Forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Are you following what I'm saying? So in terms of the word, what I want to say is in terms of the word, in terms of the work that Christ done on the cross, in terms of his, 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 him, him providing us uh, with a renewed life, and salvation and a way of escape and being our deliverer. Whatever it is that you're dealing with in terms of shortcomings, God has made a provision. He's forgiven us of that. Bill, you want to? I was just going to, I wanted to read verse. You started in 22, which is great, but 21 is like a key verse. Let's have it, Bill. It says, who, uh, who through him believed in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's talking about the resurrection of Christ and the belief in him. Now I want to move right on while we're there. Let, let's move into the, the, to the understanding of step number, number seven. As we're talking about everything is in Christ. Uh, what we want to do, what we understand in terms of step number seven, is anyone, anyone who has been seriously ill, okay, or injured knows what it's like. To need, a, need, to need others. And we need Christ in terms of this shortcoming aspect. You know, when we say we're sick and tired of being sick and, sick and tired, and what we find out is that we need Christ to deliver us from those situations and circumstances. Let's move a little bit further. It is indeed humbling when we are in that sick bed and unable to move or care for ourselves. That finished work of Christ. Even the simplest of, of needs must be met by another. By the time we come to the, uh, step seven, we realize that we're on our sick bed in terms of that shortcoming. And the only one who can meet our needs is God, again, in terms of that shortcoming. Every step up until now has reinforced the same thing. We're unable, but God is able. So now as we lie helpless in terms of that thorn in our side and humbled on our sick bed of our disease, that small thing, we pray, remove our shortcomings. And so now we enter into a serious area of prayer. Let's move down to working step number seven. Step seven requires prayer. We work this step on our knees. Our condition, our honesty, and our pain have humbled us, so now we must open our mouths and what? Pray. The temptation here is to pray general prayer. We are tempted to ask God to remove everything as if it were a packaged deal, but that's not how the program works. If we were thorough in terms of step number four, and we know step number four consists of uh, made a searching and all-inclusive, searching and fearless more inventory, if we were thorough in terms of that step, uh, four inventory list, uh, step four inventory listed each character defect separately. I have a question. 
our confession in step five was also done. We admitted to God, to ourselves, and another human being, having examined that step number four in every area. Item, uh, I, and step five, uh, it says step five was also done item by item. And later our amends will be made individually. So now our step seven work is humble prayer for removal of our shortcomings, one defect at a time. Are you following what I'm saying? Okay. Go ahead, brother. I have several questions. We don't have time for them all because we only got a few minutes, but you can, you can, you can give uh, now, well, a short comment. Okay. I just want to over Number one, do we, are we always aware of what our shortcomings are? <laughs> Secondly, how do we find out? And uh, third one, I can't remember right well, now. Well, let me help you out with those. If you remember, he, he, before we went, uh, as we went through this, what we found out was that step number four, having, there are some prerequisites until you can get up to this point. Step four said we've made a searching and fearless more inventory. And what that does is, you're welcome to come in, sis. Yeah, what, 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 um, uh, you're, you're welcome. I mean, in terms of step number four, what we've done is we made this searching and fearless more inventory. We've examined ourselves. Are you following what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And having that presupposes, or, or, or we're, we're, uh, we're, we're under the uh, assumption that you've done steps one through four. That's how you know what they are. And having done step number four, now you're, you're taking responsibility in terms of step number five, where we've admitted, and I mentioned that in the beginning of the group, we've admitted to God, to ourselves, and another human being taking responsibility. So we know what they are, because you've worked the steps. Now, if you haven't worked the steps, you, you can't distinguish between shortcomings and, and entire character defects. So the only way that you're going to be able to distinguish between the two, the work that God is actually doing in your life, are you following what I'm saying? You got to put forth some work. As a matter of fact, here's, here's the here, no hold on hold on. I want you to go to Luke chapter 11. Luke, I want Bill. I want you to go to Luke chapter chapter 11, and I want you to open that up for us, real good. And I know you're capable of opening that up, Bill. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you your shortcomings. But there is some work that you have to do. And I want to do this. You, there are some things that you must do. Five and six, five and three, five and six, five and six. You ask too many questions, Greg. You expect God to open your mind. You have one step. You ask too many questions. Five and three. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not question what you don't understand. And everything you do, put Him first. And he will give you a great path. When you say, well, why is the thing? What's the next thing? Trust and obedience is all you have to have. Stop asking, why? How am I going to get that? You will never get out of the ditch until you do something yourself. You've got to start climbing out yourself and trusting God to do the rest. When you quit, well, how would you get him out and not me? He already got you out. And yet, what do you do? You, well, how did I get out? Maybe I'll go back and get out a different way this time. Do you understand what's happening? I want you to go to Luke chapter chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Who, who's, who's at that page? Tell the other man what page it's on. It's on page. He, he, he's go, God is going to He's going to actually tell you how to pray And not only is he going to tell you how to pray In terms of praying It's required that you pray And again you must know what to pray for Having done the work that you're supposed to do But then not only does God tells us how, Tells us how to pray In terms of Luke chapter 11 He tells you the process that you must go through In terms of asking that your prayers be, be answered Are you following what I'm saying? There's a There's a three uh, 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 there's three uh, uh, principles or concepts that he says you must you must abide by when you do pray, and I'm just going to the chase of it. Romans chapter, I mean uh, Luke chapter 11, and and it has to do with everything Christ teaching us how to pray, and because we know that step number seven requires that we pray, and it's not a package deal. It's individually as we've done that step number four as we talked about. Now here it is. Uh, Luke, I mean Luke 11, uh, chapter 11, verse 9. And here it is. Are you ready, man? Uh, were you ready for me? I'm going to do 9. Actually, I'll, I'll do 9 through 13. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given. That means you're not doing it on your own by the time you get to seven, step 7. You're asking, you're praying to God. 
And he's put it on your heart, having done that work. And it shall be given. We talked about faith. Remember that? And then after you ask, you move by faith. Seek. And he says, it's not maybe or maybe not. You shall find. You're moving in, in, a, in the, you're moving in and living a recovery lifestyle. You're asking him, he's giving it to you, and now you're being obedient and you're living a recovery, absence of drugs, absence of alcohol. Have we said those things we, in terms of step number one? We admitted that we were powerless over the effects. Whatever those effects were, you've asked to be healed. And now when he says that you've asked, he says, uh, he says, seek, you, you need to move as if, uh, you're no longer moving, you're no longer operating in the midst of those drugs and alcohol. But let's move on a little bit further. He says, uh, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find it. Knock, there's a third aspect, and it shall be opened. I'll tell you what, if you're still using drugs or if you haven't done steps one through six at this particular point, are you following what I'm saying? And you're still uh, uh, in a lifestyle of... Uh, uh, of, of substance abuse, uh, uh, inappropriate behavior, whatever those things that separated you from God, you certainly haven't asked him to remove those things from your life. Are you following what I'm saying? He says, ask. And then he says, seek. Are you living? Are you, are you living? Are your footsteps being guided by God? Are you no longer uh, 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 in the, engaged in those areas of behaviors and activities? Are you following what I'm saying? You're certainly not seeking him. And lastly, he says, knock. He's not going to put you at the door of deliverance if you're still engaged in substance and, 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 and inappropriate behavior. Are you following what I'm saying? But here he goes. He goes a little bit further. He goes a little bit further. Verse 10. Yeah. He says, for everyone, there is no exception. Amen. There is. If you've done those three prerequisites, you've prayed, That's it. you've asked, and you're moving in the direction of having your prayers answered. You're not... Contending with God, as Major said. I'm going a little bit further, Bill. He says, for everyone that acts, receive it. In terms of praying. And he that seeketh, moving in the right direction. He says, you're going to find it. And to him that knock on the door of what it is that you're asking him, he's going to open it. As a matter of fact, there's a verse that says, there are no door that God open can anybody else close. And any door that he closes, no one can open. So there are some things that you have to do. Bill, give us a little bit more on that. Well, it, that actually only pertains to a born-again Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, God doesn't hear the prayers of sinners. If, well, somebody isn't through, walk, if somebody doesn't walk through the veil... Bill, I have to interrupt you on that. I like to go to Romans yeah, chapter... I, I, I want to go to Romans, if you will, chapter 8 and 5. You, if, he's ready even if you're not ready. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse... Five. If you're not ready, God is still ready. Yes. If you're not ready, he's still ready. Let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 5. He's waiting for you to knock at the door. He's ready for you. Because what he says that in Romans, Romans, Romans chapter 5, verse 8. I need somebody to tell the other men, what page, the other members of the group what pages are. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. No, 8. Romans chapter 8, verse... I want to say Romans chapter, there it is, Romans chapter 5, there it is. Hold on, Jerry, I think it is, here it is, there's the but, the exception, there's all, if you notice, are we there? Romans chapter, what's the first?